Um, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Stupak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you to the Commission for being here. A uh, number of you mentioned these 10 studies. I have a number of questions about these studies. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we can start with you. How were the authors of these studies uh, uh, selected? The, um, the authors of the study were, were selected primarily by the chief economist at the time. The chief economist provided a list of, uh, of potential authors. Was I that the report that uh, Mr. Doyle put in the record, the summary of the ideas based on broadcast? No, no it wasn't that report. Uh, no, and they, uh, she provided a, she tried to gather a list of academics and econometricians around the country who would focus in particular okay, did on Did you get industry. input from the other commissioners? We did. Uh, we did actually get input and ask the other commissioners. Uh, um, only one of the commissioners suggested uh, any names, and all of, the com all of the potential authors that any commissioner suggested were reached out to. Three of the four uh, study authors that were suggested by Commissioner Copps uh, agreed to end up doing a process. One, I think, said they didn't okay. want to. Are, are you generally those. satisfied with these ten studies? Are we generally satisfied with yes. the with the ten studies? Yes. I think that they give us a general uh, a general sense of of uh, what's going on. Well, in let me ask you. Today. Study number one, which looks at how people get their news, is alleged to use data that excluded Latinos. Have you heard that? I'm sorry, you said what then? I Your first study excluded Latinos. It was a study on how people received their news. Excluded Latinos. Wouldn't that be a flaw in the study? I, I think then it, I think it doesn't capture how Latinos are actually receiving their news. No. Well, if you don't cut them, they're excluded. No, if, they, right? if they are not, if they are not uh, included. How about number two, not. which focuses on TV station ownership structure, which alleged allegedly missed 75 percent of the TV stations that were female female owned in 2005, <laughs> and missed 69 percent of the TV stations that were minority owned in 2005. Is that correct? I'm sorry, you're saying the study missed those? Yes. I, I think that, that w what was important though is that the study also concluded that e even having missed those, that minority ownership uh, for TV stations had fallen uh, and that female ownership stations... Well, of course it's fallen if you missed 75% of them. Well, no, I'm saying that even... But the, the, point of the, uh, the point of the study actually supported there were concerns with minority and female ownership. Let's you're right. I think it's, it's unfortunate if they didn't count, if they didn't find all of them, but they were still concluding that there were concerns with it. Well, let's go to study number three. And study number three I'm a little concerned about because that's by Mr. Crawford. At the time, was it Mr. Crawford negotiating with the FCC to become the chief economist? No, when we asked him to do the study, we had actually asked Mr. Crawford to be the chief economist the, the, uh, year, the year before. He was unable to because of his academic commitments. We asked him to end up doing this study. He subsequently asked him when it came open again to would he consider being the chief economist for a year. It's a, it's a rotating position that academics come and take. Sure. But more, but more importantly, because he did this study, Mr. Crawford has not and will not and is recused from working on the media ownership proceeding. at the Okay, commission. but it looks, uh, looks like the dates overlap from our investigation. Let's go to study number six which it's in the peer review, it says the empirical data in the study are so limited that the study conclusions do not and cannot possess the reasonable level of confidence necessary to provide policymakers with useful evidence on which to use their regulatory decisions. Put simply, the findings from the single three-day study of one type of news broadcast should not form the evidentiary basis of any sort of public policymaking. Uh, you're familiar with that peer review? I, I, I am familiar with that peer review, and the way that the uh, uh, proposed item responds, it says that this is not the only study. There were three different of the studies that all concluded the same thing. That really? Well, let's, let's go to study number seven. That cross-owned newspapers and broadcast properties actually increased their news. It was, a, it was the same conclusion which you had had in the other studies that had been done. So while the, the item recognize, I mean, while we recognize that there's been peer reviews that say we shouldn't rely on this, we don't exclusively... But you're relying upon this study and this peer review to be help make your decision. Let's go to We're peer right. review of number study seven. And the peer review along with the criticism. Number seven, it said, the study is oversimplistic. Over over <clears throat> it's oversimplistic. Its assumptions and methodology are flawed. It fails to analyze the effectiveness of the failed station rule and fails to evaluate any of the MMTC's recommendations to approve minority ownership. Each of these were required by the Third Circuit. That's the Promulus Court ruling. Instead, the Berestino and the Ellickson study, this is study number seven, develops a legally flawed and unsound methodology that inflates the percentage of, of minority and women-owned broadcasters by using census data that includes music program distribution, piped-in music services, network television. Overall, it says, I find the study 
is insufficient to meet rational decision-making standard. The, the, so that's what the peer review said on number seven. Well, Again, that's well, a minority ownership. Yes, and if I could respond, what the what study seven concluded was it found that minority and females were clearly underrepresented in radio, television, and newspapers relative to their proportion. Well, and, isn't and it found that our data was extremely limited, and that we needed to do better data gathering. Right. Both of which I think uh, uh, we're, we're saying. So I just point out five studies. of the ten studies. Five of the ten studies that you're relying upon to make this decision on December 18th that you're rushing to make are flawed or have some real serious questions about the integrity of the data being based upon. I, why, would, why would they have to use census data? Why wouldn't they use FCC data to reach c conclusions about women and minorities? I, I think what's most important is I'm not sure that there's any disagreement, and I think the studies support the, the, what the concerns that have been raised that minorities and females are underrepresented in broadcast. I don't think that the, the uh, even if they use Maybe I'm make, they not making myself on another, clear. But I think that they still, I still support that quote, minorities and females are underrepresented, which was the finding of the study. Let me quote the last line of the peer review on number seven. It said, I find the Berestinol and Ellickson study insufficient to meet the rational decision-making standard. That's what the FCC is supposed to be doing. Five of the ten studies have serious flaws and questions. Minorities and women are not being counted. There's no basis to do it. You talk about wanting to go forward in the future, either short-term and long-term, how are women and minorities, as Ms. Solis uh, mentioned, are being counted. You don't have a rational basis to even begin for a baseline, so how can you go forward to make a comparison? Your own data, your own data within the commission. Um, Commissioner Tate mentioned uh, Miss Hughes, Kathy Hughes, being the largest minority-owned radio station. But when she submitted her application, was it 3 FCC 323, you excluded her. You, didn't even, you don't even have her in your own records. That's how flawed the data is and your studies are that you're trying to make this decision. That's what's bothering us. It's 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 what's the rational decision making? What are you basing it upon? The 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 concerns you're raising about study seven actually though the study actually concluded and that we need to gather better data. That's that was the conclusions of the study. So uh, while people think that we it should have been it should have gathered better data, which we're in the process of trying to do, the study's basic findings I think you agree with and I agree with. Uh, but more importantly, well, but whether you said study, your own opening, the, you, Commissioner Tate, Commissioner McDowell, you, you rely on these studies. And in fact, when you said 170,000, you spent the taxpayers' money on these studies. You actually spent 322,500 dollars on these studies, and five of the ten are flawed. And, and then you also released them, if I believe you did, Mr. Chairman. You released these studies before you had a final, published, submitted peer review. And that's that's contrary to OMB guidelines on the way you do it, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not in violation of your own OMB guidelines. No, it's not in violation. No, it's not in violation of the OMB guidelines. Okay. OMB okay. guidelines say that before a commission or agency disseminates, and by disseminate, which is a, a term of art, they mean that they put out ask, they put out the they put out this. the peer review, got, and it has to be right, saying time that this for one more Commission position well, that we did not yeah. disseminate. We'll, we'll break, put take, it out for public. Take comment. this up when you come back before ONI. But let, let me let me this the commission. <clears throat> did set section 200, 257, section 257, market entry barrier studies in 2000, which were made part of the FCC's official record. Those studies, among other things, discuss the extent to which small businesses, women and minority owned businesses, face barriers entry into communications industry along with a series of proposals. What work have you done, has the FCC done, to follow up on this section 257 findings of 2000, which was recommended you do. Sure. Can, Gentleman's time has expired. Please answer. Can I, can I respond? Yes, please. Actually, the commission has a section 257 report and order that I circulated a year ago that was adopted by the commission in October that hasn't been released because we're still writing on a statement from one of the commissioners. Commissioner Adelstein voted it December of last year, but it's still not given us his statement. So uh, correction, I have given oh, you Hold on, statement. I'm sorry. I, I just won't have myself misstated here. I did give the statement. If you didn't as of yesterday morning. <laughs> so did, when we well, checked yesterday morning. I did as of yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. You did as of yesterday. It took, uh, he voted it a year ago, and he did not give us his statement for, uh, for a year. The report recommends that Congress adopt the Minority Tax Certificate Program. We've been trying to get that out for a long time, and have been unable to because we didn't have a statement that was provided by one of the commissioners. That is the action we took in response to the Section 257 report. It circulated a year ago. It was adopted in October. I have further questions. I'll take them up later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll submit the questions to the Commission. We'll ask that uh, they be responded to.